A cake shaped like feet? $30 million? A piano? Keep watching to find out what kinds of cakes Buddy Velastro has created with his team at Carlo's Bakery. Here are the best and worst cakes we've seen on Cake Boss. When Buddy Velastro's niece asks for an under-the-sea themed cake for her Sweet 16, Velastro and his team set to work creating one of the most intricate and interactive desserts Carlo's Bakery has seen. In the center of the creation is a huge aquarium swimming with tropical fish and a handmade coral reef sculpture, and the edible underwater scene that surrounds it features cake-rendered sea creatures of all shapes and sizes. The team replicates the coral's jagged edges and variant textures with a combination of isomalt modeling chocolate, fondant, and layered colorful frosting. It was the sickest coral we've ever done. The team adorns the towering confection with flashing lights, making the whole scene appear watery and rippling. To top it off, Velastro engineers a helicopter-like propeller that spins two cakefish around the entire structure. With both real fish and their sweeter clones, this cake is a masterpiece that mimics the majestic world under the sea. When Buddy Velastro and his team are hired to make dessert to celebrate the 40th anniversary of Sesame Street, Carlo's Bakery creates an entire city block out of cake. The final product captures each tiny detail of this beloved childhood show. Velastro wanted the cake to properly commemorate Sesame Street's emphasis on interactive learning. So the cake portrays not only the characters of the show, but the letters and numbers they teach viewers as well. At approximately 8 feet long, the team had to transport the cake in separate pieces and then put it all together. Together. It all paid off in the end when Cake Boss viewers witnessed the whole cast of Sesame Street gathering around the table to take in the delicious miniature versions of themselves. Oh. Me trying to contain myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it smells so good. <laughs> For the 30th anniversary of NASA's Space Shuttle program, Buddy Velastro and his team made one of their most extravagant cakes of all time. The cake is impressive in itself. It contains each part of a functional space shuttle, an orbiter attached to solid rocket boosters, and an external tank frosted and seemingly ready for takeoff. But this cake is more than just frosting and fondant. As usual, Velastro couldn't resist going above and beyond expectation. This one flies. With its flaming engine and the American flag hand-painted on the side of the rocket, it's easy to forget this machine is edible. Thankfully, it never actually shot into space. Velastro's clever engineering allowed guests to see a rocket fly without losing their dessert to the stratosphere. Buddy Velastro isn't all pyrotechnics and pizzazz. His technical craft and artistry is what makes his cake so unique. There's no better cake to show off Velastro's fine-tuned detail work than the Leaning Tower of Pisa model he made for a wedding. The cake mimicked the Italian tower's medieval architecture down to each Corinthian column and capital. The couple who hired Carlo's Bakery stressed the importance of avoiding a falling-over Tower of Pisa, but with the cake boss himself and his team of skilled bakers, their worries were for nothing. Velastro told the New York Post, It's like being an artist. You spend days painting a painting. When you finish it, you step back. You feel like you want to fall down. Then you say, Look what I did with my God-given hands. When I'm making cakes, I go into that zone. I don't hear nothing. I don't feel nothing. All my pain goes away. At over four feet tall, it wasn't quite as big as the real thing, but it certainly tasted much better. We're talking about making a life-sized race car cake. When the president of the Retail Bakers Association approached Carlo's Bakery with this idea, Buddy Velastro was skeptical to say the least. You know how long it would take to make a cake an actual size of a car? You gotta be nuts! But before long, as Velastro often does, he finds himself carried away with excitement and enthusiasm for the project, insisting that this cake isn't going to be, as he put it, just any car. The NASCAR model includes all the bells and whistles of real race cars in cake form. The Cake Boss team built it by covering layers of pound cake and Rice Krispie treats with fondant, modeling chocolate, and 2,000 pounds of buttercream frosting. Under the hood, yes, there's a hood, one taken from a real car and wrapped in fondant, lay an edible engine. It took a team of 56 people four days to finish the masterpiece, and ended up being the biggest cake Velastro had ever seen, let alone built. When Shenandoah Conservatory, a music school in Winchester, Virginia, wanted to throw a party for their donors who helped them purchase 94 new pianos for their music students, they knew the only place to turn was Carlo's Bakery. The task for Velastro and his crew? Create a life-sized piano cake to feed a party of 700 people. We've done some huge cakes. This one's probably top 10. 
And it was no easy feat. The team was understandably nervous to drive a giant cake balanced on three legs all the way down to Virginia, so creating a stable base was key. And then there was the issue of covering their massive confection with one seamless piece of fondant to replicate the smooth finish of a Steinway. In order to get a piece big enough, Velastro had to fully climb on top of the counter to roll it out himself. Grand pianos have the most beautiful, glossy black lacquer. And the way we're going to achieve this is we are going to steam the heck out of this cake. In the end, the team delivered an impeccable Steinway replica, complete with detailed sheet music and all 88 edible piano keys sitting atop a stunning gold base. Buddy was approached by some local dollhouse collectors who were having an open house to show off their extensive antique dollhouse collection, and they wanted a special cake for the occasion. Velastro wasn't content to just make a life-size dollhouse out of cake. His team also created several rooms filled with miniature edible furniture to fill up this tiny home. Using a molasses Swiss cream filling for the structure of the house itself, the design team also sculpted a mini velvet sofa, a little dining table complete with a doily table runner and tiny flatware. The kitchen had a fondant stove and a tiny coffee pot. And the proverbial cherry on top? They even made little paintings and portraits to hang on the walls, all out of edible, moldable fondant icing. We got everything in here, including the kitchen sink. If the cake business doesn't work out, at least Velastro knows they can easily pivot to the construction business. This Cake Boss creation drew from the most unlikely inspiration, tax season. Buddy Velastro's accountant friend asked him to make a cake for his CPA employees who were being overly taxed by a brutal tax season. What better way to honor a group of people under stress by the IRS than with a life-sized replica of themselves? Buddy built his stressed out accountant using brown derby cake, which is made with whipped cream and fruit. And in order to achieve that lifelike look, he had his staff pose in various anxious ways so he could get the body language just right. While the size and scope of the cake is astounding, it's the attention to detail that really brought it to the next level. From the look on the cake CPA's face and the crumpled receipts to the container of Chinese food, the post-it notes, the lifelike office phone, and the laptop computer, it's all so realistic. Anything that can make taxes seem appetizing is a win. I think the thing is unbelievable, and let's be honest, the size is fascinating. I can't believe what Buddy was able to do. The owners of a New York-based Colombian coffee shop wanted to celebrate four years of being in business, so they asked the cake boss for a cake that not only celebrated the success of their cafe, but that honored their homeland of Colombia, the source of their one-of-a-kind coffee beans. Buddy incorporated their rich coffee into the buttercream and also built a cake featuring two giant burlap sacks overflowing with actual Colombian coffee beans. He cleverly pressed an actual piece of burlap into some fondant to give his confection that realistic burlap texture. His team also constructed a coffee mug bearing the colors of the Colombian flag and a detailed Colombian sombrero. But the star of this cake was the silver coffee pot seemingly floating in midair. This gravity-defying centerpiece really takes this cake to a whole new level. The secret? A metal pipe covered in molding chocolate gives the illusion of a stream of hot coffee pouring into the mug. Cafe owner Lily cried at the sight of the cake. And really, what more could a cake boss ask for? Buddy Velastro's hometown plumbing company wanted to celebrate its 100th birthday in style. Naturally, they hired Carlo's Bakery and the Cake Boss crew to bake a toilet-themed cake for the big event. Velastro and his team decided on a life-size vintage model, complete with both frosting and a working flush. The cake includes a tank full of blue piping gel to mimic water and tasty versions of the various mechanisms used to make toilets functional. Velastro even added a newspaper and toilet paper roll to the scene to make it more representative of a real bathroom, which might in turn cause you to pass on dessert. Listen, I do some of my best thinking on the toilet. I mean. <laughs> Although the team opted out of including edible feces in the dessert, biting into a toilet seat only sounds marginally more appetizing. Buddy Velastro cashed in on a diamond-studded wedding cake at a whopping $30 million, breaking the record for the most expensive cake of all time. While most of Velastro's cakes aren't cheap, prices fluctuate in the lower thousands, this one was a whole new kind of extravagant. The bride insisted on adorning the cake with real diamonds, rubies, emeralds, and sapphires, making much of the multi-layered cake inedible. Velastro admits the cake was pretty plain before the expensive decorations were added. He made a tiered vanilla cake with 
white frosting and place the jewels haphazardly into that blank canvas. Velastro claimed he wanted the gems to steal the show, but even diamonds lose their luster when you start to think about the kind of person who is willing and able to spend such an excessive sum of money on dessert. I'm a baker. What am I doing with $30 million in my truck? Anytime we've spoken about me making a birthday cake for you, what did you tell me you want? A replica of me. Apparently, it wasn't Buddy Velastro's idea to render his wife in cake form, but he accepted the challenge nonetheless, and that seems to be where the cake boss went wrong. For Lisa's 30th birthday, Velastro sculpted her from fondant and modeling chocolate. I just want to share with you my vision of you. He claims it's his prettiest cake, thanks to the beauty of his model, but the thought of biting into a chunk of Lisa's arm ruins the sentimentality a little. Standing upright at over five feet tall, the cake's frosted eyeballs seem to follow Velastro's party guests around the room. Luckily, Lisa did not seem to notice, unless her excessive enthusiasm was merely hiding her horror. We wouldn't be surprised if that were the case. But hey, it's the thought that counts, right? When Ed, Buddy Velastro's party planning customer, pitched a chandelier cake to him, Velastro's first question was, Does it got a hang? Yeah, I mean, it's chandeliers hang, buddy. Cakes don't hang. But soon enough, the Cake Boss team displayed an upside-down tiered cake covered with blown sugar pieces and LED lights. Sadly, though, the chandelier cake was not long for this world. As Velastro lowered his creation down to the ground so he could serve it to his guests, it crashed to the floor. It just slipped right through my fingers. Thankfully, no one was hurt by the shards of blown sugar that splintered from the masterpiece as it met its untimely end. A spa in Hoboken, New Jersey was holding an ugly foot contest, and Buddy Velastro was hired to make dessert. The cake could have depicted anything even vaguely related to pedicures, for example, polish bottles, filing tools, even nail clippers. It could have just been a regular frosted cake, but in typical Cake Boss fashion, Velastro and his team dreamed up the most ridiculous idea possible and put it on a cake. The bakers carved two human feet, one before the pedicure and one after. Even if the foot is sparkling clean, no one wants to see it on their dessert plate. But wait, there's more. This cake also featured, in gory detail, a pre-pedicured foot, complete with warts, yellowed toenails, and cracked heels. The fact that Carlo's Bakery was paid for this one is a feat in itself. During a Halloween episode, Velastro's team was approached by a woman named Betty who said she was part of a crew of actual vampires. Me and my friends are vampires, and I'm going to become a vampire, and it's a really big event, and I'm very excited, and I've been working on it for five years and they finally accept me. Naturally, she needed a life-size coffin cake complete with a man inside. You know, to symbolize a vampire's victim. The clincher? She wanted the cake man in the coffin to actually squirt blood when bitten. The double clincher? She wanted the man to look like Danny Dragone, one of Velastro's mustachioed bakers. Because this is Cake Boss, the team took this odd request and ran with it, pulling off a final cake that was honestly a little too realistic. After delivering the cake to a cemetery in the dead of night, the team stood by and watched in shock and awe as the vampires descended on the cake and drank the blood, which thankfully was just some sort of edible red liquid. I think we've seen enough. Yeah, Let's I get the hell out of here. Velastro was tasked with making a cake for a pumpkin carving company that specializes in over-the-top carved pumpkins. And in classic Cake Boss fashion, he took the theme and ran with it. The words jack-o'-lantern usually conjure up images of cute triangle eyes and maybe a toothy smile. But at Carlo's Bakery, apparently, a jack-o'-lantern to them means the most horrifying face you can imagine carved into a pumpkin. Using modeling chocolate and fondant, the team created an impressive, if disturbing, cake, with lots of lifelike details that really did resemble the string pulpy inside of an actual pumpkin. Unfortunately, the face they gave this jack-o'-lantern is so bizarre and frankly upsetting that it's hard to imagine anyone feeling hungry after laying eyes on this baked beast. If they were going for scary, they knocked it out of the park. If they were going for appetizing, pass. While most of Buddy Velastro's wildest ideas become delicious works of art, the hearse cake ended up looking more creepy than cool. Velastro should have run for the hills as soon as his client said they had a special idea. You want a what? A hearse? What are you, pot? Velastro and the team then got to work to commemorate the birthday of an undertaker. This cake features a pink hearse driven by a chocolate version of the birthday girl. The scenery surrounding the car is a strange combination of zebra stripes and psychedelic flowers, making for a jarring aesthetic overall. I learned a long time ago, you always do whatever you can to make the client happy, okay? Maybe Mary didn't get the memo, but 
This is what they want. This is what they paid for. While it was a thoughtful idea, some vocations simply aren't right for being depicted in the frosted world of cakes, and an undertaker is certainly one of them. Luckily, the birthday girl appreciated Velastro's work, but it's hard to imagine anyone else enjoying biting into a corpse's preferred mode of transportation. You know, a lot of people were like, oh, buddy, it's it why the hearse, but I'm like, she's an undertaker. <laughs> Some cakes aren't born bad, they just fall victim to their circumstances. Such was the case for this cake, which was made to celebrate a girl named Lexi's Sweet Sixteen party. Velastro's vision for the cake was that each tier would tell a story about her life, from a beach-themed bottom tier to a fondant Starbucks cup, cityscape middle layer, and even a signature Bloomingdale's shopping bag on top. Unfortunately, Lexi's life wasn't the only story this cake would tell. As it was transported down the stairs by Carlo's Bakery employees Danny and Cousin Anthony, the cake fell victim to gravity, tumbling down the entire flight of stairs as onlookers screamed, not to mention Buddy's sisters. What the hell happened? <gasps> My brother is gonna kill you. You tell me. Bye! Are you all right? When Velastro saw what happened to his creation, things obviously got even worse. What did you do? It's f***ing Danny's fault. This is for today! I told him I had to reposition my hand and he pushes the cake towards me. Bring the thing inside! But amazingly, Buddy and his team managed to rebuild the cake in an hour and a half, which means Lexi still got her cake and a truly sweet 16. He put in so many different things about me personally that it was amazing. The cake was great. To see how happy that girl was made my day. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Mashed videos about your favorite food shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.